So I received this question from my special membership group, and it was about how can a woman know that she's coming off too masculine or that she's exuding too much masculine energy? And it's a great question because in today's world, you're hearing more of a discussion about masculine and feminine. For some people, that's, that's a discussion they haven't had in the past and they don't, they're not aware of what that all encompasses and how it impacts our daily life and our dating and relationships. And if you watch some of my other videos, then you know I'm all about masculine and feminine energy and how we have to learn how to tap into these things. So it's important that we break down and have a better understanding of it. But let me, let me say this as we move forward. Though I'm gonna mention to you a lot of the habits that come across as masculine, I think it's important for us to understand that a lot of times when we use the word masculine, we're really saying you're coming off hard, hardened. It's almost like masculine is more hardened, femininity is more soft. And so not everything that's gonna be listed is gonna necessarily be a masculine trait, so to speak. It's more so that it just comes across more hard, more detached. That's a very big thing. In masculine energy, and I actually didn't mention it in the list, but I'll mention it now. You come off a very detached. It's a very, very, uh, what's the word I'm looking at? Nonchalant energy sometimes. It's a very emotionally detached energy. That can start to give off that also hardened energy. And let me also say this, you know, when we are struggling with these things, and, and please understand, this is important for you to learn, not just for the sake of men and dating, but for your quality of life. And when we're struggling with these things, a lot of times it, start, it stems from things that we haven't healed from in our past, things that are blocking our energy. Now, let me make clear, that, that principle is the same even for men. A lot of men who are, are not walking in their masculine energy, are not exuding that, is because there's some things in their past, trauma they haven't resolved. And until they do that, they won't fully walk in their power. So for a woman, it's the same thing. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. So I know for me, like one of the things that helped me unlock my energy and, and walk more fuller into it was going to therapy and addressing some of the deeper issues and resolving those things. And that's why I highly encourage you to do that. And one of the best places you can go to make that happen is to better help, all right? BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. You can tap into over 25,000 therapists who can really help you get to the root of the issues, resolve these things, and start experiencing a better quality of life. To get started, just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. With BetterHelp, and that's better H-E-L-P, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom picked by you, uh, more scheduling flexibility, and at a more affordable price. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com forward slash Stefan Speaks. That's better, B-E-T-T-E-R, help, H-E-L-P, dot com forward slash Stefan Speaks. And I've also linked them below in the description. So be sure to check it out and take full advantage of this. So now let's, let's get to this list, all right? And the first thing that can come off as very masculine or is a, a habit of what some will consider a masculine woman is that you're very unapproachable, okay? So, you know, one of the things that women tend to tell me a lot is, well, I, I am feminine um, once I'm in a relationship. And that's great. And, and I, I believe that many of you are, or, or at least are capable of being more feminine. But if you're not exuding that, then how will anyone know? How will anyone be drawn to you with the understanding that you are capable of walking in it? 
So a lot of women don't realize how unapproachable they come across. It may be due to the fact that I always say, you know, a lot of you are just mean mugging all day, every day. And, and mean mugging, for those you don't know, you got a scowl on your face, no smile. Now, I know a lot of women don't like to be told to smile. I get it, right? But at the very least, you have to understand that when you are in environments where you want to be able to be more approachable, you have to smile. Not, it's, it's in your favor, all right? And I'm going to explain why it's, it's a big deal because some of you might be thinking, well, I know plenty of women who don't smile and they get approached. I got an answer for that, but hold on one second. So smiling will definitely make you more approachable. And I always say, I say this on tour all the time, when, when you tell me you struggle to smile, that that's just not who you are, it says to me you have something deeper within that needs to be resolved. Because when you are at peace from within, smiling comes naturally, okay? So if you're struggling with that, then ask yourself why. Just don't say this is who I am. No, let's go deeper, all right? But to answer the question of, well, there's plenty of women who don't smile and they get approached. So here's the key. Most of those times, they're getting approached who just want to have casual relations with them. Because men who only want to have sex with you and have fun or whatever you want to call it, they don't care about your energy. It doesn't matter. It, it actually works more against you when you give off a more masculine energy because I always say that kind of energy says to them, oh, you won't get in your feelings. Because remember I mentioned earlier, it, it, it kind of goes with the whole emotionally detached. And emotionally detached is ideal for a man who's just looking to have sex and pass time. He doesn't want you to get on your feelings. So if you come across that way, he's thinking, oh, you're the prime candidate for a casual situation. You'll even see where women who come off that way tend to have tons of married and taken men approach them. Because again, to them, it's like, oh, she can play her position. She doesn't get all emotionally involved. We're good here. And a man may not be able to articulate that, but again, that energy, that, that spirit you're giving off communicates that to him, all right? And they've seen it multiple times, so they start to connect those dots in their head like, oh, this means this. Anyways, that's one of the reasons, big reasons why, yes, you may still see women get approached without smiling or being approachable. And there's some cases where, listen, you know, depending on, I have to say, if I'm going to be honest, depending on your level of attractiveness, you may have a little bit more leeway, right? But we should not be leaning on that because again, what kind of quality man will you attract if you're not exuding the correct energy or a more positive, efficient energy? And, and I can tell you from women in my membership group or women that, I have, that have had as clients and just talk to you randomly, those who've learned to shift their energy into a more feminine energy when they're out and about have seen amazing results. So again, one of those traits or habits of masculine women is being coming across as very unapproachable. All right, so here's a second habit of highly masculine women that I think many overlook is you tend to overspeak and dominate conversations, okay? Now, I want to start off by saying I understand that that's, that's not always about you being masculine. Sometimes there's a lot of women who are just not aware of their maybe excitement or passion that they tend to just jump in and, and, and overspeak that person or, again, they dominate the conversation. I understand that happens, but... The overspeaking specifically can come across as very masculine to that. Or again, that hardened energy, that energy that gives, that gives this perception that you are difficult to deal with, okay? And so it's important that you become mindful of that because more and more men are paying attention to those things. And the reason why it can create such a problem or a negative perception is because, listen, at the end of the day, if you don't show the ability to just listen to what he's saying, then one, how does that play into when you guys are in a relationship and he's trying to express himself? As well as how does that play into you being able to properly process what he just said? I'll never forget this story where... Um, a couple I knew, they went to a counselor. I wasn't available to counsel them at this time. 
So they went to a different therapist and there was an exercise the therapist gave them where the therapist told the husband, all right, tell her how you feel. And then he goes on his whole vent and, and says how he feels. And then at the end of it, she goes to the wife. She says, repeat back to me what he just said. And the whole next 30 minutes or so was her not repeating it, more trying to interpret it. Well, what I heard was this. Well, it sounds like he's saying this rather than, no, 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 no. What did the man say? <laughs> okay. And so for a, for a lot of women, there's this bad habit of you're not listening and, and taking the words specifically that he's saying to you to understand where he is coming from. You are twisting it and turning it and creating a narrative that isn't accurate. All right. So when you going back to the point of this, of this, uh, going back to this point, when you over speak and you show that inability to listen, then you show an, uh, uh, inability to properly process what's being said. And that can lead to a lot of arguments, to a lot of misunderstandings, to a lot of breakdowns in communication. All right. But then also let's get back to the whole dominating the conversation. Because again, I can't tell you how many times men have said to me, like, I can't talk to my wife or I can't talk to my partner or whatever. I don't feel like I'm being heard because she's just overrunning the conversation every single time. And when men don't feel heard, they will shut down. And I say this, unfortunately, even though they'll shut down, they'll stay in the relationship. So don't confuse them staying with that means they are happy with the way that you're communicating with them. It's just that many just take it as, okay, you know what? I, I don't want any problems. Let me just keep the peace. So I accept that she over talks me. I accept that she controls all the conversations, even though I'm not going to do anything about it. But it leads to so many more breakdowns and unhappiness and all kinds of problems. So be mindful of that. Be, be very conscious of listening, not listening to rebuttal, listening to understand, listening to allow this person to get everything off their chest, and then you speak. All right, so let's move things along. And the third habit of highly masculine women is being very dismissive, okay? So it kind of goes hand in hand with what we talked about with the conversation. Um, Though, though we were discussing over-talking and dominating the conversation, that woman that does that tends to also be dismissive of what the man is saying. Now, again, this is one of those things where I don't want to call dismissiveness a true masculine trait. It's more so it comes off very hardened. It, it comes off very difficult. And that kind of plays into someone perceiving you as very masculine, all right? And so, again, men have feelings. <laughs> and I know that's a shock to some of y'all, right? But they do. And when you're being dismissive of them, that hurts. That can cause them to shut down. Now, I already can hear some of y'all saying, well, how about when he's being dismissive to us? Listen, anyone in the relationship being dismissive, that's a problem. Both the man and the woman have to work on trying to understand and acknowledging the other person's feelings and what they're saying. Now, acknowledging doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean you have to agree, okay? But, but it just means you're, you're saying to them, I hear you. I understand why this would bother you. Though, and when I say, when I use that phrase, I understand why this would bother you. You may not understand it in the sense that it would bother you, but you understand it bothers them. That's how they react to things. And when you have that acknowledgement, that lets people feel more heard, more valued, and it allows them to continue to be open with you. But I have to say this, you know, when you are a very dismissive woman, again, it goes back to what I said in the very beginning. There is something in you that has not been resolved that causes you to just shut people down like that. I also have to say that it, it, it doesn't just stop with how you are with men. If you're very dismissive towards him, there's a very good chance you're dismissive towards your friends, to, to your family, possibly your children, okay? And all of that is going to create a very unhealthy, unhappy environment. 
You got to be willing to look at yourself in the mirror and check yourself in disregard. All right. Because healthy communication cannot exist with you being constantly dismissive. And you have to ask yourself, how does it make you feel when people do it to you? And, and the fact that if there is someone doing it to you, so going back to let's say that man has been doing it to you. Okay. That doesn't mean do it back. That means address it. And if he's not willing to correct it, then you let him go. But you don't stoop down to that level. You don't develop the habit of it because again, that habit will now carry on to other aspects of your life. So I have to also say this. If you're not too sure if you're dismissive or not, ask people that you talk to, ask people that you care about, tell them to be brutally honest with you and ask them about what it, you know, don't even just ask about being dismissive, ask about how is your communication style with them and take the, be open to their feedback and start working on those things. Because when you can learn to speak with more love and more compassion and, and be more willing to listen and hear people out, you will start to exude more feminine, positive energy. So I, I want to add something before we move on to the next point. So my videographer brought to my attention that sometimes as a woman, you, your response to that man expressing himself may just be a quick, okay. Now notice how I said, okay. It's more like, yeah, shut the hell up. I, I don't want to hear no more. <laughs> it's, it's not really a, okay, I get you. You know what I'm saying? And so sometimes you, you may not be attacking them with your words. You may not be flat out dismissing them with verbally, but your energy still says, I ain't trying to hear you right now. Be mindful of that too. So everything that we're talking about, because again, we're, we are talking about masculine energy and feminine energy. So it isn't just about the words you speak. It's the energy that's coming off of you. And so to really fix that is to get to your heart, to get to your intent when you come into a conversation. If you come into that conversation with a genuine desire to find peace, to find resolution, to listen, to understand, then you will give off an energy that is more receptive and more welcoming and creates better communication in any of your relationships. All right, so now we got another one. And before I give you this one, I need to, I'm just gonna give you this disclaimer in advance. This next one might trigger some of y'all, all right? Stay with me, take a deep breath. Again, I have to repeat, Everything I say is with love and to help you experience a better life overall and dating and relationships, okay? Nothing is to attack you. Nothing is to undermine or devalue you. That's not what I'm here for, but I understand that certain things can hit hard or can be tough to swallow. Just listen to everything because I'll break it down. So the next habit of highly masculine women is seeing her value in her achievements, Again, hear me out, okay? So let me start with this. I, I've noticed over the years that there's many situations where I ask a woman, what makes you a good woman? And she'll start going down the list of, I have a great job, I have my own house, I have a business, I'm educated, so on and so forth. And it's, it's all these achievements that she's made. And, and listen, there's nothing wrong with taking pride in those achievements. There is value in those achievements, right? It's all beautiful, good stuff. But when that's what you base your value off of, that comes, that plays into the whole masculine role. All right. Because the reality is that you, those things are value to you in the way you evaluate men. All right. The, the typical woman, most women, when a man has those types of things, education, good job, all that type of stuff, that's impressive to you. That's important. And that makes him more desirable to be in a relationship with him. However, that does not speak to where the man finds most value in women. And more specifically, the man who has his stuff together. He's looking for more of the things like you're loving, you're supportive, you know, um, th things of that nature. So what happens is when you're, when you're focused so much on achievements, it shows this detachment from those other things of being loving, supportive, wanting to look good for your man, all these different things that are seen as the more feminine energy that comes out of you. So a lot of men, again, 
when you hear men on the internet dismiss those things, I don't want to get into dismissing them outright. But I have been one of those guys that when, when the woman says all these achievements, I'm like, okay, so what? And I don't say that disrespectfully. I just say, listen, that's not what we care most about. Now, you may say, well, listen, there are men who do, and there might be men who jump on this video and say, well, I care about those things. Yeah, listen, this is, it doesn't mean there aren't any men who care, but I have to say this. You tend to find men who don't have their stuff together place more value in a woman's achievements than the man who does have his stuff together. Because the man who doesn't, he, he needs that. You, you become his stability. Those are resources that he needs in his life. You become very valuable in that way because he doesn't possess those things. Now, again, it doesn't mean there aren't men out there who achieve much and appreciate and value a woman who have achieved. It's just that on average, that's not what's going to speak to the man's heart. It can be icing on the cake, but it is not the actual cake, okay? So as a woman, you, you, I want you to still, still embrace those things, but start focusing more, not, not say focusing more, but not putting the other qualities to the back burner, especially when you desire a relationship in your life, okay? And, and understand that for both sides, men and women, we have to tap into what the other needs to have poured into them. And, you know, like some people say that that degree is not going to keep nobody warm at night. And again, I don't say those things to be dismissive of it. I say it just to bring light to the fact that, yo, we can't just hang. It's, it's great, but we should not hang our hat on it. All right. Uh, not the way that we value ourselves. Now, one more thing I have to mention with how this valuing of self as a woman with your achievements can throw things off for you, not just in coming across more masculine, but in being able to embrace a guy who brings a lot to the table, so to speak. What I have seen is that when women put so much stock and weight into their achievements, and now they come across a man who, let's say, has achieved more than them, some women become intimidated by that, and they feel inadequate because now they feel like, where is my value here? He already has all this. It's almost like trying to get a rich man a Christmas gift. It's like, what do I give this man? He already has everything. So now that some of those women start to feel like, well, why is he with me? Like, how, how am I special enough to be with? He can be with somebody else. And I've seen them sabotage these situations or run from these relationships because they're not seeing the value that he is seeing, which is in the other things that she's capable of being, loving, supporting, and all these different things. And so it can really cause a conflict within some women, all right? So again, you know, all these things I tell you, all these videos I make, it ain't just about the man, it's about you and you being able to walk confidently in these situations and feel good about yourself. And so when you can understand that you are not just your achievements, it brings a value that makes you feel more at peace and, and, and allows you to see past when that man does have a lot that he brings as well, which is what many of you desire in a partner anyway. All right, so we got some more to talk about. So the, the next uh, habit of highly masculine women is that you downplay or take issue with femininity and feminine women. So if this video has pissed you off, <laughs> there's a chance you fall under this one. Right? And some of you, some of you may already have been gone by now because they're already triggered. And again, I'm not here trying to trigger anybody. But at the same time, I understand certain truths are going to hit hard. But yeah, if you are taking issue with it, you got to ask yourself why. Now, I know there's a lot of women who say, well, I'm just not feminine. That's just not who I am. So the issue that they take with it is that they feel like I and others are telling them to be something they're not. In my perception, I'm not trying to tell you to be something that you're not. I'm trying to pull your true self out of you, all right? I'm telling you to be the person that you've been suppressing all these years. Now, of course, there's exceptions to every rule, but for many of you, you've become detached from your femininity and you've been 
almost forced or had no choice but to walk more in a masculine energy for survival purposes, all these different things. So I understand that not everyone wanted this, wanted to be in this energy that they've been in right now. But it, it just under underlines the fact that it's what you've become out of necessity. It, it's not necessarily who you truly are, okay? And so I'm trying to bring out who you truly are. Now, a, a perfect example of, of why I think it, it's not about who you really are is there are women who say to me, well, okay, I'm not feminine. But then you bring that woman around kids and they become loving, charming, all this feminine energy oozing out of their body. And then remove the kids and bring a man around and feminine energy is shut down. No more feminine energy, okay? And so when you see that, what that says to me is that you do have it. It is in you. The problem is when you're around the kids, they're no threat to you. So you're able to be vulnerable. You're able to be open. You're able to tap into your true self. But when you're around men, you view men as a threat, as danger, as a potential to be hurt. So your walls go up, the hardness comes out, that more masculine vibe is now being presented, okay? So we have to get to the root of the issue, and that is the fear of being vulnerable, the fear of being yourself, and understanding that being feminine isn't what gets you hurt. But yes, if you give your energy to the wrong person, there are going to be some bad people out there. That doesn't mean stop being feminine. It means stop dealing with those individuals. All right. Now, of course, there's a lot more we can talk about when it comes to tapping into feminine energy. I don't want to make this video all about that. We'll talk about that in, in other videos and, and things I have coming in the future. But I do because I know there's a big topic when it comes to, well, having to work in corporate America and certain work environments has push women more into a masculine energy. You know, it, it, some, some may feel it's unreasonable to ask them to not be, to not give off so much masculine energy. But again, we'll say that for another time. The point here though is there's no need to take issue with it. Even if you're going to say to me, well, it's just not who I am or I, I, I'm not happy when I'm walking in it. I've yet to come across that. I've yet to come across a woman who really worked on this, tapped into the feminine, and did not find herself happier, more at peace, healthier, all these different things. But if you can say to me, listen, Stefan, it, it just don't work for me. That's just not, who, that's truly not who you are. I'm not going to fight you on it. I do think you should give it a try. I'm not going to fight you on it. But even if that's the case, there's no reason for, no need for you to take issue with it or take issue with others who walk in it or others that see the power and the joy in it. You know what I'm saying? At the, the, the most important thing I want for all of you is to tap into your true self, is to walk in, to become the person that God created you to be. All right. And so, you know, ultimately there's going to be some variations here and there, but I do think for the vast majority of you, exuding more feminine energy is who you truly are, where you'll truly be happier and what will work best for you. All right. And so now a couple more and we'll, we'll wrap this up. The next thing on this list that uh, of habits of masculine women is too independent. So I want to say this, I, like these two things go hand in hand. Na being very independent naturally gives off a more masculine or as I mentioned earlier, hard energy. Okay. Or when people start tapping more into that masculine, they naturally become more independent person. It's like, it's a vicious cycle that works with, with, with each other. Now I understand again, many of you are independent by necessity. I am not trying to bash your independence, but I am bringing light to the fact that yes, being very independent gives off an energy that can make you more difficult to deal with. It, because you have to understand that relationships thrive on interdependence, not independence. So the principle was remain true even if we talked about a man. If a man is too, too independent in a relationship, he can undermine that relationship. His partner will feel less valued. She will not feel like uh, she's uh, included in his life in the way that she would want to be included or respected, and it will start to cause problems. Well, the same thing happens on the other side, all right? So we, we've got to understand that 
And rather than just dismissing the whole idea of the need to work on it, again, ask ourselves, okay, how can we improve in that area? And how can create a better balance? Because for again, for many of you, being independent is due to what you have to deal with in life. You don't got much of a choice right now. But I want you to get better at turning that switch on and off when necessary. Like learning how when you got to do things yourself, you just got to do things yourself. But if let's say there's a man or even, and it's not even just a man, family, friends, they offer you help, you become more comfortable with letting people do for you. Because what you'll find with independent women is not just, oh, a, a man doesn't feel needed. No, your whole family thinks you, you got it all together. You don't need no help. So you'll see that independent women tend to be the women where no one's calling to check up on, but everybody's calling to dump their issues on. Everybody's calling for help. And it's not because they don't love you. It's not because they, they wouldn't check on you. They thought there was a problem. It's because in their head, they've been conditioned to believe you were okay. You got it. And so that only adds more burden to you, which only makes you more hardened, which now makes you exude more masculine energy. So again, it's this vicious cycle. So it's just learning how to, at the very least, let others do for you, be more vulnerable when it's called for. But yes, when you got to do for you, you got to do for you. And can't nobody knock that. All right. And... Last but not least, <laughs> the habit of very masculine women or women who come off as very masculine is that you're come off or that you're perceived as difficult to deal with and that you don't listen. Now, when I first made the list, I was gonna put uh, unable to be led. And I know that's a that's a very triggering way to put it. And I said, you know what, I'm, I'm not even gonna say it like that for this video. Let's just focus on difficult, <clears throat> excuse me and unwilling to listen, which it kind of goes hand in hand with the whole perception of unable to be led. Now, some of you may say, well, I got to be led. I'm a woman. I'm smart. I can, I can handle mine. Cool. But when we're working together as a team, we can't have two. It's, it's almost like you can't. What does it say? You can't have two chefs in the kitchen or, or you know, it's like having two heads. It's like you, you got people now. It's going to pull in different directions and that creates uh, uh, conflict that creates problems that creates difficulty. You need it to be able to come together smoothly. And typically for that to happen, someone has to be willing to say, okay, I will, I will allow this person to be the leader. Or even in sports, there's a team captain or the team is, is uh, hearing to what the coach says. If the team doesn't adhere to what the coach is saying, everything goes haywire from there. Now, I, I have a completely different video on why I, I always say, you know, let, it should be the man. I'm just going to put it out there. I think it's best and most efficient in the long run for the man to be the lead. But I want to make it clear. I don't say that because a woman is like incapable or can't make a decision or she's, you know, not smart or whatever. It's what you'll see. Women in the long run typically do not want to have to be the leader in their relationship. Most women want a man who they can rely on to be assertive, make decisions, handle things that they can trust. The, the conflict for a lot of women is they just don't trust men to do that or they don't trust that specific man they're with to do that. And we can say, well, then why be with that man? I'm not going to get too much into that. What I am going to say is this. When you come across as someone who, when I use the words don't listen, it kind of goes back to over talking, dominating that conversation then you look like you're not going to respect my input, all right? And for a man, that's going to be a problem for most men, all right? Especially for the man who, is, and more specifically, for the man who is masculine. If he's not masculine, that's a whole different ball game. But if he's masculine, that is going to be a lot of conflict there, all right? And when you come across difficult, and when I use the word difficult, here's the thing. It's like, and I'm going to give a very simple example. If I say, hey, let's let's go in this direction, and now it turns into, well, why we gotta go in that direction? I don't wanna do that. And it's just this whole thing, right? It's like, damn, <laughs> why are you making this so difficult? It's not that you can't ask questions. It's not that you can't say, well, listen, I see things differently. It's the 
energy behind it. I think a lot of you don't recognize how you're coming across in those moments and how it feels more frantic, how it feels more fearful, how it feels more, I don't trust you or I think you're too stupid to tell me which way we should be going right now. Let's keep it real. Some of y'all feel that way about the dudes you're dating or married to. It's unfortunate, but it's reality. And so even when you may be speaking calmly, your energy is dismissive. Your energy is speaking down to. Your energy is difficult. And that is a problem. And that tends to happen with women who are or exude already very masculine energy. So these are things you want to be mindful of. But again, there's so much more to talk about. There's so many like other videos to, to break down some of these things we mentioned in this one. But I just want you to understand that feminine energy is your power. It is for your quality of life first and foremost. It will be beneficial for you in dating and relationships. But I want you to know that it will make you more peaceful and happier regardless of whatever season of life you're in. So you should welcome it and embrace it or at the very least, give it a try. Thank you for watching this video. I hope and pray you enjoyed it. Be sure to watch this one over here on Meeting the Right Man Gets Easier When You Do These Seven Things. You have to believe it to receive it. And always remember that your perception of things can create your reality. So when those perceptions are negative or self-defeating, it creates a scenario or an environment where